just a few more random tips about using micro pet pads, starting with which one to choose. Um, and so they come in all these different sizes and we typically call them, like refer to them by the biggest volume that they have. And we put a P in front of it. So like a P200 would give you up to 200 microliters, a P1000, a mil, a P2, two microliters, P20, 20 microliters, and a P10, 10 microliters. So you can see that there's some like overlap. So for example, if I want, I have a P10, a P20, a P2, and so all of these I could use to pipette, say, one microliter, but I want to choose the one that has the lowest volume, and this is going to be the most accurate. Um, it has to do with the way that the pipettes are built. They have this like thing inside of them um, where there's like the pistony type thing. Basically, there's going to be more error, um, so you're going to have like a bigger, less accuracy when you have a bigger pipette because it has like a bigger piston and then it has the bigger thing of a bob with the error. So that's all really technical, but what it means for you is that your pipetting is going to be most accurate if you choose the pipette that has the lowest volume. So to pipette one microliter, I would want to choose the two microliter uh, micro pipette. If I don't have one of those, then I could use um, the P10 would be better than the P20. Actually, I can't even use the P20 with this because it tells me that the range for this is two to 20, and it's only going to be accurate in that range. If you go, tr don't try to go below with the range um, or above the range, that's gonna hurt your pipette. You don't wanna hurt your pipette be nice to your pipette and it'll be nice to you hopefully okay so, so speaking of pipetting really tiny volumes um, and so when you're pipetting really small volumes um, especially if it's something a clear liquid um, it can be really hard to actually see the liquid inside and to make sure to know that you actually pipetted it up especially when it's at when it's coming up to like one of these lines I guess you can't see that, but it's really hard to see it, like especially when you're doing stuff and it's in a tube. So basically, you want to always look and make sure that you've actually drawn up the liquid that you thought you drew up. Um, and then when you're pipetting it out, you want to make sure you actually watch that little line of the liquid go down. So I like to watch the little line you can see. The liquid line will be coming out when you pipette. So it seems really simple, but um, there's so many times, like, have you ever done a PCR reaction and it's like why the heck doesn't it work and then it's probably because you had some sort of pipetting error where maybe you had air when you thought you had liquid or maybe you thought you pushed things out but you didn't or um, when you were drawing out you pushed up your thumb too soon and so you get some of it came back and you didn't have it there so so I like to look before and after I do my pipetting to make sure that I took everything up and then I put everything out um, and this will help you, especially with those really small volumes um, that can be hard to see. Um, a couple other things that kind of seem like duh, but like come into play like all the time is open your tubes before you go and you grab your pipette tip. Um, this can be, I have this problem, I have to remind myself of this constantly. This can be especially with those like screw caps where you can't just like unclip it with one hand. Um, then you definitely want to unscrew those caps, um, do that sort of thing before you go pi take your pipette tip so that you're not having your nice clean pipette tip and then you're moving it all around trying to like undo things and then jamming your tight tip into your clothes and all of this stuff when you're trying to keep these tips nice and sterile potentially. Um, speaking of the tips, I'm one of those people who typically just like takes whatever tip is there. Like I would probably make some people crazy um, but when it comes to times when I'm pipetting and I need to really keep track and I'm doing like a lot, like this morning I was setting up a QPCR reaction. So I had all of these tubes and then I need to make sure like I was going like one through 12, whatever. And so you could do that because it's like these tip racks are set up in like the same format as like your PCR strip. Um, if you go in order on your plate, um, you can then count backwards so if you're going in the same order and then you're like, oh my gosh, what well am I on? Well, now you can kind of cross reference to your pipette tips to know which one you should be on. Um, and this can come in really helpful, um, but also try to not, um, not have that problem where you can't remember which well you were in. If you're doing a lot of pipetting, you can do things like marking the wells. Um, 
help see them. You can, when I do pipette, I typically like if I'm using a tube, then I move it, um, and then I use a tube and I move it and that sort of thing. So there are various tricks that you can use to help um, keep track of things, and I have more on those in other posts. Um, but today I just wanted to give these couple other um, things about pipettes that I had um, forgotten to mention before. So choose the pipette with the lowest volume that will pipette your sample, you're going to have the most accuracy there and you're also going to have like, you're allowed, you can get more precise. So precise is like how many digits after the decimal or that sort of thing. I mean, it doesn't have to be after the decimal, um, but it's like if you have that um, pin the tail on a donkey analogy, um, accuracy is whether you're actually on the donkey's butt and precision is how close are all of the different tails around that donkey's butt. Um, so, more on that in another post as well. Um, speaking one more thing about decimal points, um, so the decimal places are going to be like, typically they're indicated as like red. Um, so anything above the line is like before, the, anything black is above the decimal line, anything in red is below the decimal line. Um, so this would be one microliter. If I go this way, I'm increasing, so like 1.09. It's, it's, and then if I go this way, I'm going down, and then I'm ultimately going to go below the decimal point, and so now I'm in um, like 0.9 microliters and that sort of thing. Um, t also, typically these pipettes, they have like a lock, um, so it, this is going to be really loosey-goosey. Make sure that it's on lock before you go to pipette, and if you're pipetting the same volume a lot, um, make sure that you're not like accidentally, sometimes what can happen is you're kind of like, when you're pushing down, you're moving this so even though it's on like lock it can still move a little and so this can cause like you can actually maybe changing your volume and then you think you're pipetting the same volume but you're really not because you're moving this and so I like to periodic like before I go and pipette I just do a quick like check with my hand and pipette like when I'm doing it to make sure that I'm not like changing the volume this will also be like a little bit of a sanity check and make sure that you actually put the right um set it to the right volume okay so choose the smallest pipette um, and oh yeah so speaking of like you can get more digits and stuff with these um, with the smaller sizes typically um, so you can go out to like two and then you, the last one's a guess um, so you have the one like the lines should be accurate and then you do like an estimation between the lines but you don't want to have to do the estimation um, and so much more of this and other posts about measuring and that sort of thing okay um, I think that was all I wanted to say, so now I'm going to go check my PCR.